Hello students, welcome to Mr. TK classes. Today we are doing the statement of comprehensive income or the income statement. And this is our question. The question reads, you are given information relating to PTA Limited for the year ended 30 June 2020. Information, pre-adjustment trial balance on 30 June 2020. Right, then additional information required. Prepare the statement of comprehensive income for the year and the 30 June 2020. Um, the solution, okay, this is the answer book. We go back to our question. All right, we are going to prepare our answer here. So for you to prepare the statement of comprehensive income, you should know the layout or the format. All right, so we start with our sales. The sales amount is five million four hundred and sixty thousand. Five million four hundred and sixty thousand. All right. So we are going to adjust this with this amount for data allowances. So let's subtract our data allowances. All right. So do we have anything else that we are going to use to adjust our sales? Let us check in our additional information let us check in our additional information all right i can see that there is information number four during the year k kumalo a data retained a merchandise a credit note of 910 was issued to him so our customer retained a merchandise so this merchandise is no longer part of sales because it has been returned to us it is no longer part of sales so let us come here and say five million four hundred and sixty thousand subtract sixty five thousand subtract nine hundred and ten we are going to get five million three hundred and ninety four thousand and ninety then cost of sales cost of sales cost of sales okay we need to come here and do this all right uh, let us go to our cost of sales what is the amount two million eight hundred and sixty thousand two million eight hundred and sixty thousand all right let us go to that uh, information number four that we just looked at all right number four the cost price of the merchandise was 520 so we subtract 520 here why do we subtract 520 all right let us come and explain here all right, so we are going to say we are going to say cost of sales cost of sales is the cost of goods that have been sold right cost of sales is the cost of goods that have been sold so now remember uh, we have a merchandise that was returned and its cost is 520 so it means that this merchandise is not part of our sales even its cost is not part of the cost of the goods that have been sought because there is no sale here this was returned so we should remove this cost from the cost of goods that have been sold because this was not sold that's why we are coming here to subtract the 520 all right um we are going to say two million eight hundred and sixty thousand subtract 520 we are going to get two million eight hundred and fifty nine thousand four hundred and eighty so what you should always remember with this is that whenever you have returns the sales amount is subtracted from sales the cost amount is subtracted from cost of sales right all right okay uh, we are going to say five million three hundred and ninety four thousand and ninety 
subtract 2,859,480 we are going to get 2,534,610 okay then now we move on to other income we move on to other income we are not going to strike through this one why because this amount we might use it again all right so uh, we move on to other income i can see we have commission income of 11,050 11,050 all right let us go to our additional information let us go to our additional information um commission income of 650000 was erroneously omitted by the bookkeeper this commission should be recorded so we should record this commission of 650000 let us record it right let us record it let us record it 11050 plus 650000 we are going to get 610 661,050 right then do we have any other income so if you are given a trial balance it is easy to look for income you check your credit column so we can see that we have rent income here so we are going to say rent income rent income so our rent income our rent income our rent income is 60,060 60,060 right so do we have an adjustment for this all right we come here number six no changes were made to the monthly rentals during the year. Rental income for June 2020 has not been received yet. So, uh, let us come here and say rent income. Rent income. Rent income. So, our rent income, uh, we are going to calculate it like this. Rent received. Rent received. The amount in the trial balance is the amount that we have received so the amount that we have received is sixty thousand and sixty right and the and if we go to the additional information no changes were made to the monthly rentals during the year rental income for june 2020 has not been received yet if we check here our year is ending 30 june 2020 so june is the final month of our financial year and we didn't re uh, and we didn't receive our rent for june which means that we received for 11 months only right we received for 11 months only and our monthly rentals are the same throughout the year so we are going to say 60060 divided by 11 what are we going to get because we want our rental per month we want our rental per month so we are going to say rent income per month rent income per month okay 60060 divided by 11 rent income per month is 5460 right Okay. so this amount 5460 is our rent for june is our rent for june because we are remember we are calculating our rent for june that we haven't received and we want to record it here remember the amounts that we put under our statement of comprehensive income are our amounts for the year right uh, our amounts for the year or for the financial period that we will be dealing with all right so let us do the calculation we are going to get 65,520 all right so let us add with 
1050 to get our total of other income which will be 726,510 right so we add this because this is gross profit and this is income so we should add we are going to add our gross profit to million five hundred and thirty four thousand six hundred and ten so we are going to get our gross income of three million two hundred and sixty one thousand one hundred ten eighty three million two hundred and sixty one thousand one hundred ten eighty all right so we move on uh, to our operating expenses all right before we do that let us just check here because we might this might result into incomes right so provision for bad debts okay let me just check what we have here all right okay trading stock all right let me check what we have here all right okay so i've checked i've seen that this is going to go under operating expenses so since we are now going into our operating expenses i'm going to explain it here the two conditions that we might have for these two to fall under income or to fall under operating expenses i will just explain them when we are doing our operating expenses all right so now let us do our salaries 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 and wages 793,000. all right i have seen the adjustment down there so i need to do this all right i've seen the adjustment here on 1 june 2020 the company hired two new employees these employees were forgotten when the salary journal was prepared their salary details are as follows all right so uh, let me come here salary right salary what you have to know about salary is that gross salary is recorded gross salary is recorded gross salary is recorded right gross salary is recorded all right so now we need to know what exactly is gross salary we need to know what exactly is gross salary all right um all right gross salary gross salary uh -huh. let me just put this to represent amounts subtract deductions deductions so deductions we have payee and others right i'm just gonna do this will not uh, spend our time on that then here we have net salary so gross salary subtract deductions what are we going to get we'll get net salary right we'll get net salary gross salary subtract deductions we get net salary get net salary all right i just need to put this uh, to enhance presentation of our work to enhance presentation of our work all right we need to do this we need to do this all right so now let us go back to our adjustment their salary all right on 1 june 2020 the company hired two new employees these employees were forgotten when the salary journal was prepared which means that the amount that we have here 793,000 does not include the salaries for these two employees because they were forgotten when the salary journal was prepared and remember this is the statement of comprehensive income we record amounts for the year or for that particular financial period so we should also include salaries of these two people right okay but we have net salary and deductions and remember we said gross salary is recorded now we need to calculate our gr our gross salary which is very easy right because remember if we say gross salary subtract deductions to get net salary so here we have net salary of 
7,898. And we have deductions of 4,128. Right? So, what is our what is our gross salary then? What is our gross salary then? Remember this one we will be subtracting. So we are going to use bottom up. So when you are using bottom up, you oppose the sign. So you see that this one is a negative, right? So if it is a negative, now we are going to add it because we are now we are now doing bottom up. So we are we are opposing the signs. All right, so we are going to get 12,026. So this is our gross salary, 12,026. So that's what we are going to add here because these employees were forgotten and their salary is part of our salaries for the year. So we should add it, right? Then we are going to say plus 793. We are going to get 805,026. Then director's fees. Director's fees. Alright, so here um, I can see we are not yet done. So let me just cancel what we have used. Employer's contributions, we'll use them here. So for now, let us just leave it like this. Let us move to combines direct uh, to director's fees. All right, director's fees six hundred and sixty-three thousand. Six hundred and sixty-three thousand. Six hundred and sixty-three thousand. All right, and let us go to the additional information that is related to this. All right, um, additional information. The company has three directors. All directors receive the same monthly fees. I can see that this is quite long. So let us come here and say director's fees. Director's fees. Right. The company has. The company has three directors. Where is it again? The company has three directors. Okay. The company has three directors. All of them, they should be paid for 12 months, right? Because it had these directors for the whole financial year. So, they should be paid for 12 months. Which means you are going to get 36 months, one director equivalent. 36 months, one director equivalent. Alright, what are they saying now? The company has three directors. All directors receive the same monthly fees. All directors receive the same monthly fees. One of the directors did not receive his fees for May and June. Okay, so it means we are going to subtract May and June. These are two months, right? So what are we going to get? We are going to get that four months, one director equivalent. We are going to get that four months, one director equivalent. That this is what you are going to get. This is what you are going to to get, right? This is what you are going to get. Okay. So the uh, what what was paid? What was paid? Let us come here. Director's fees six hundred and sixty three thousand. So six hundred and sixty three thousand was paid, right? Was paid. This was this is equivalent to what to 34 months one director equivalent. So let us come here and say 663,000 which was paid divided by 34. We are going to get 19,500 per month, right? Per month and remember we are calculating for two months remember we are calculating for two months may and june according to the adjustment right one of the directors did not receive his fees for may and june we are calculating for may and june so we are going to say nineteen thousand five hundred multiplied by those two months 
it is going to be 39,000. So we are going to come here and add 39,000. Right? And add 39,000. So this was paid, but it was not at the full amount. Now let us add what was not paid. Then we get our director's fees for the year. Right, so 39,000 plus 663,000. We are going to get 702,000. 702,000. Okay. And now we can strike through the whole thing. Then audit fees. Audit fees. Okay, I can see rent income that we have done already. Uh, strike through. All right, audit fees is already there. Doesn't have an adjustment. Bad debts. Okay. All right, so we come here. What is the amount? 17,485. That's our bad debts. All right, so let me come here. Do we have anything uh, in the adjustments? Do we have anything in the adjustments? We are going to come here. Let's look at data who owed the business 2,925. All right. Let's look was owing the business 2,925. Right. Was declared insolvent and unable to pay. Okay. This person was owing this much. And was declared insolvent, uh, insolvent and unable to pay. All right, his estate made a direct deposit of one thousand three hundred and sixteen. So one thousand three hundred and sixteen was paid. Right? Okay. On thirty June twenty twenty, the balance should be written off as irrecoverable. This is the balance which should be written off as irrecoverable. So the balance is going to be paid debts the balance is going to be bad debts okay so we are going to say plus seventeen thousand four hundred and eight five we are going to get nineteen thousand and ninety four we are going to get nineteen thousand and ninety four so now we are going to come here and do this all right so sundry expenses are already there Sundry expenses are already there. Employers' contributions. Employers' contributions. All right. So remember, we have those two employees. And we have employers' contributions that are related to these two employees. And these employers' contributions uh, were not included in this amount that we are seeing here. Right? 91,000. Because these two employees were left out of the salaries journal. These two employees were left out of the salaries journal. So even the employer's contributions that are related to them were also left out. And what is the amount? 3,283. 3,283. So now we can cancel this whole thing. We are done. All right. So... We are going to say 91,000 plus 3,283. We are going to get 94,283. Right, so we are going uh, to move to our bank charges. All right, I can see interest income is one of the ones that will be here. Bank charges is already there. Stationary. What is the amount for stationary? Nine thousand one hundred. Okay. So the stationary that will be in the trial balance represents the stationary that was bought. Because what the bookkeeper does is that when stationary is bought, the bookkeeper will simply recorded that as an expense. That's, that this will be the stationary that we'll be seeing here. But then you realize now that, okay, when stock taking was done or was conducted, 
there was stationery that was on hand. There was stationery that was not used. And when you are recording in the statement of comprehensive income, because we said we record our amounts for the year, you only record the stationery that was used, not stationery that was bought. So stationery bought 9,100, subtract stationery on hand at the end of the year, right? We get our stationery used of 6,760. 6,000, 6,000. 760 okay so we subtracted 2310 40 right we subtracted 2310 40 so now repairs and maintenance i can see all right let us just strike through all right repairs and maintenance depreciation there are no adjustment for this okay so we move on to what? We move on to our provision for bad debts. All right. So this should have its own explanation. Provision for bad debts. Provision for bad debts. So the rule of the thumb is, the rule of the thumb is, the rule of the thumb is, if there is an increase right it means that you should recognize an expense if there is a decrease it means that you should recognize an income right why because this amount that you are seeing here provision for bed debts 4550 is the amount that was there at the beginning of the year right now at the end of the year we have a new amount the one that is here provision for bed debts must be increased to 5908 which means the difference between the amount that was there at the beginning and the amount that is there at the end it is provision for bed debts for for that particular financial year right so that's why an increase is an expense because there are more people that you are doubting that they might not pay us. So there are people that are that we are doubting that they might not pay us. And uh, we have uh, how much here? We are just going to say the amount is 5980. Subtract the amount that was there at the beginning. This one, uh, 4550. 4550 it means our provision for bed days for the uh, for this financial year which is 30 june 2020 or which ended on 30 june 2020 is 1430 okay so we are going to say provision for bed debts adjustment 1410 that provision for bed debts adjustment all right so now why do we uh, recognize decrease as an income if we have provision for bed debts at the beginning here right and they are bigger than provision for bed debts at the end that means that we have a decrease right it is a decrease from what this amount we have previously recognized it as an expense so if we have a decrease it means we are reversing the expense because the expense is decreasing so whenever you are reversing an expense you are supposed to recognize an income if you are reversing an expense you recognize an income that's why a decrease will be an income and it goes under other income right so now let us move to trading stock deficit trading stock trading stock deficit trading stock deficit all right so when it comes to trading stock when it comes to trading stock when it comes to trading stock so let me write trading stock surplus 
or deficit trading stock surplus or a deficit all right so you can see that we have trading stock amount in the trial balance yeah 234,000. so if this amount right trial balance amount if the trial balance amount is bigger right is bigger it means that there is a deficit right then if the trial balance amount is smaller it means that there is a surplus right it means that there is a surplus why because the trial balance amount the trial balance amount the trial balance amount okay let me just say trading stock trading stock amount in the trial balance in the trial balance is as per is as per calculation right is as per calculations so whenever we are buying inventory it will increase whenever we are selling it will decrease right then trading stock amount trading stock amount trading stock amount in the trading stock amount in the additional information additional information is as per is as per valuation or physical count right is as per valuation or physical count all right let me just uh, put some bullets here let me just put some bullets here all right so okay now that we have these two statements that are here let me just uh, put some random amounts to explain this let's say the inventory as per calculations uh, is 50 runs then now you go you you go to the storeroom or to the warehouse you do your valuation you see that the inventory that you have is for 30 rands it means that there is a deficit of 20 rands right it means that there is a deficit of 20 rands right Okay. so on the same note if you have calculated your inventory you were adding everything that you are buying you are subtracting everything that you are selling you see that no your inventory should be 200 runs right now you do your valuation maybe the inventory that you have has appreciated in value right then now, when you've done your valuation, you realize that your inventory is worth 250 rands. So, that other 50 rand is going to be surplus and is an income, right? So, this is as per calculation and this is as per valuation, right? Calculation, valuation calculation valuation all right so now let us come back here let us come back here uh, to what we have there on the question right so the trial balance amount the one that is as per calculation is 234,000 right is 234,000 then the one uh, we have dealt with this one let us remove it 
All right, stock taking, which was conducted on 3rd June 2020, reviewed the following trading stock 226,000. Okay, so the one that is as per physical count, right? Physical count, right? Is this one 226,200? So you need to compare these two to see whether there is a deficit or there is a surplus. But now, before you do that, before you do that, the one as per calculation, the one as per calculation is not correct. Why? Because you have to come to this adjustment, adjustment number four. There is a merchandise which was returned. If a customer returns a merchandise, it will increase the inventory that you are having in the business. And if you go on with this adjustment saying no entries were made in respect to the return of the merchandise, what are they saying here? They are saying that this merchandise which had a cost of 520, when this amount was calculated, this merchandise was not added because no entries were made. Remember, this is inventory that was returned. We have sold the customer as returned, so it should increase our inventory, but no entries were made. So we should adjust this amount. So the actual trading stock that we should have as per calculations is... 234,000 plus 520 is 234,510 20, right? So we are going to compare this amount. We are going to compare this amount with this amount. You can see that the amount as per calculations is bigger than the amount as per physical count. This will be you. Let's say you are the accountant of the business, you are the owner of the business, right? Maybe you are one of those people. Uh, you have done your calculations. You have ascertained that the inventory that you should be having in the business is this much. Now you go to the warehouse, you see inventory of this only. It means that the difference between the two you should recognize it as an expense. Maybe inventory was stolen or there were breakages and all that. So it should be recognized as an expense. So we have an expense of 8,320. 8,320. Right, so now we need to add all this. So let us just uh, start with the amount that we already have on our calculator plus 1,400 plus a uh, 166,400 plus 19,094 plus 49,140 plus 702,000 plus 805,026. What do we get? 2,598,300. So we are going to say two million five hundred and ninety-eight thousand three hundred and twenty-eight. Okay. If we subtract this amount, if we subtract this amount, three million two hundred and sixty-one thousand one hundred and eighty subtract two million five hundred and ninety-eight thousand three hundred and twenty-eight. We are going to get Six hundred and sixty two thousand eight hundred ten fifty two six hundred and sixty two thousand eight hundred and fifty two right then I have seen and um, all right so here let us do this K 
can what else what else i have seen interest income here 2340 2340 so let us do this right okay let us add we are going to say 662,852 plus 2,340. We are going to get 65,110.92. sorry. 110.92. Right, so now we need to subtract interest expense. We need to subtract interest expense. All right, interest expense, we are going to get it from here. So we need to do our working papers. Interest expense. Interest expense. Interest expense. Right, interest expense. So when it comes to interest expense, let us just put a small table on. When it comes to interest expense, we are going to have balance at the beginning of the year. Balance at the beginning of the year. Right. This is the loan amount, right, that we are talking about here. This is the loan amount that we are talking about here. So, uh, the amount is 390000 the amount is 390,000. Okay, the amount is 390,000. Okay, so this loan amount will be increased by uh, the interest expense. Interest expense. Right? Because they are saying interest on loan is capitalized and it has not been entered yet. So, if interest on loan is capitalized, it means that it is supposed to increase the loan amount, right? It's supposed to, in to increase the loan amount. The company will not pay this interest, right? It will keep the money. That money is also going to be part of loan. So it will increase the loan amount. So that interest that uh, we are talking about we don't have in this question we need to calculate it right so here we are going to subtract a uh, repayment we are going to subtract the repayment because when you are paying when you are paying back the loan the loan amount should decrease right the loan amount should decrease when you are paying back the loan so balance at the balance at the end 351,000. So for us to get this one, for us to get this one, we need to do bottom up, right? We need to do bottom up. For us to get that one, we need to do bottom up. So we are going to say, we are going to say 351,000. Right, we oppose the signs because we are doing bottom up plus 65,000 subtract 390,000. What are we going to get? 26,000. This is the amount that was added back 26,000. So come here, we come and subtract 26,000. We come and subtract 26,000. So we are going to say 600. And 65,192 subtract 26,000. We are going to get 639,110.92. 639,110.92. So, um, we are done with this one. Right, we are left with the one for income tax. Income tax for the year was correctly calculated after taking all additional information into consideration at 156,000. So we are going to say 156,000, right? Okay, what are we going to get here? 
subtract 156,000. We are going to get 483,192. 483,192. So this is how we prepare our statement of comprehensive income. Thank you.